Welcome to Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action, bringing fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom for today's shifting paradigm. Now, it is your moment to open your mind, relax into your body and spirit as we explore the greater meaning of your now experience. Bringing wisdom, laughter, and clarity, here are Shri and Kira. Namaste and welcome, beloved ones, to Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action. I am Kira Ra. And I am Shri Ram Ka, and we are delighted to be with you. You know, we are. And today, I love today, we are diving into, this is our culminating show, Shri, our last show of our series on messages from other dimensions. And what a fabulous way to end this with our dear friend, Bill Burns, talking about angels, UFOs, and the misinformation. I think especially what's going on on the planet it right now. This is a really powerful and captivating topic. And, you know, Bill has been on the show. He's been regular with us. Those of you that have been listening to us for the past eight years know that we've had Bill on, gosh, at least once or twice a year every year. So always a great guest. Absolutely. And, you know, the topic today, we've kind of gone from the, um, let's just say the formless messages of channeling and inspired guidance. And we're kind of coming forward now to, uh, well, you know, some of these folks have form. Yeah, they, well, some and of, we some start... of these visitors are, <laughs> are just, uh, they have some shape and size to well, them. Well, they do. And, you know, I think about, we started this with James Gilliland was the beginning of this series. And I kind of like the bookends of James and Bill. And in the middle, we had uh, Steve and, and Barbara Rother. And we had Melody from Sw- Sedona Journal and Robert Shapiro last week. A really rounded look. And, and uh, we hope our intention of this series was to broaden your mind, broaden in your field of experience into this. Beautiful indeed. And you know, one of the things I want to remind everybody, you can join us on Twitter. You know, say hello. Our Twitter handle is at Shri and Kira. That's simply at Shri and Kira. You can also use the hashtag Shri and Kira Live so that we can read your tweets later. So please consider sending us a, uh, your little messages on Twitter or tweet join, away or joining <laughs> us live on the call because you can always uh, do that as well. Indeed. You know, one of the things that's fun, uh, at least what my definition of fun, is when we get to peek behind the veil, when we get to um, discover a mystery or bring some light of day to something that was in the shadows. And certainly uh, one of the perennial topics of being in the shadows is about the the UFO phenomenon, that Uh is the... uh, uh, unidentified uh, flying objects, the uh, the uh, extraterrestrial visitors, and and everything that goes with that. This has captured the imagination of people around the world for the last half century. Well, you know, Sri, one of the things that I think is important to pay attention to is the way that Hollywood has shifted. You know, I, I I'm old enough. I think all of us are old enough, especially now that they've redone it to remember ET when we first came out with this benevolent, loving, precious little being that we all wanted to go home. You know, we wanted and, him and, to- and that was when. Spe- <laughs> Spielberg was still kind of more in a benevolent mode, you know, followed by, uh, you know, when we had the third kind, you know, the close encounters. And and then what's fascinating is this shift, and Bill has always added a lot of illumination to this, this shift from a benevolence to a be afraid, be very afraid, to many, many uh, Hollywood movies, TV shows that want us to be afraid of that which we cannot um, fully explore and that which might shift the paradigms of the accepted norm. And that's really where we step in, especially with, let's look at the global situation right now. You know, it, it seems like everything's coming together, and this is why we're we're starting up in August, Angel. Stay with us because in August, we're starting up an, a powerful series about healing our planet, healing ourselves, and a really productive way to look at how to integrate what's happening, not to hide from it, not to get angry and activistic, but how to bring passionate action to, to what's happening out there on our planet. Well, and there's certainly a lot of polarity and energy bubbling on the planet. That's right almost now. an understatement. <laughs> you know, we, we look at what's uh, the, the horrific things going on in, on, in Gaza. And Syria, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And let alone uh, the whole Russian tension that's dancing Ooh. in Eastern Europe. It's it's truly a crazy time, and it's a time when those of us that are not directly involved in those conflicts and tensions to be holding a space 
of, of peaceful uh, energy to help, uh, let's just say, to help calm the waters. Well, and, you know, speaking of that, I want to make a, an invitation to everybody listening. Make a note right now. Shri and I every month hold a wonderful circle. It's a miracle team circle where we do ceremony and explain in depth all of the revelations for that month. Now, remember on YouTube, this is always posted in video by the first of each month. So if you're hearing this around, you know, the first of August, go check out the revelations for August. But on Wednesday night, August 6th, I want you to make a note of that. August at 5.30 Pacific time. You can join Shri and I free. This is going to be a live telecall with Shri and I. And all you need to do to get the access code is send us an email to simply guest at shriandcareradio.com. Just send us an email to guest at shriandcareradio.com. Now that's and G-U-E-S-T. Not, it is. Not guess. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're guessing, you'll oh, remain no, you guessing know, forever. Am I that hard to understand, <laughs> Shri? Oh my goodness. So, hey guys, remember, make a note. August 6th, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Send us an email, guest at shriandkara.com, uh, excuse me, shriandkara.radio.com, and we will get you into that phone call free. A powerful teaching during a powerful month. Because you know, Shri, coming up in August is the second of the three supermoons. And this is part of why we've been seeing this heating up during the summer. We've had the supermoon in July. We have this supermoon coming up in August and a culminating supermoon in September. Remember, August is hot and July is big and this is what's happening and it's really an important time for us to be paying attention to everything that's going on right now and an important time to recognize that along with what's happening on our planet, we have a lot of interest galactically, universally. This is beyond a woo-woo situation. There is, we are at a moment of divine intervention. And how we call that moment forward is also based upon that planetary thought body. And we've talked about that a lot. Absolutely. For those of you that are unsure what we're referring to, the planetary thought body is indeed the energy of unresolved emotional um, hurt, pain, and fear. Um, and hurt, pain, and fear, what I'm talking about is just, just back up from the picture for a moment. Right. Every time a person is frightened, every time a person releases great emotion, whether it's fear, terror, or joy, that emotion travels, travels infinitely. Yeah. However, the, uh, the coarser emotions such as fear and, and, and hurt and, and, and everything associated with that actually get caught. Yeah. They get caught and you might call it a web of um, a filtered web that's surrounding our planet. And uh, so as a result, this planetary thought body is filled with all of the misinformation, yep. all, of the, all of the negative belief patterns. Joy and love, on the other hand, don't get caught. They just keep going. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so when we, when we have a burst of joy, a burst of, of happiness, that energy flows out, and, and the people nearby certainly notice it. And then uh, it just keeps on going out into the universe. Now, I'd like to think that our planet is sending a beacon of joy energy out in the universe. You know, I, I would <laughs> like to think that too, but, you know, Sri, the reality is it's not, and we all know that. And this is why there's been such an interest. You know, I have to back up, guys. Let's let's talk about July. Let's talk about the extraordinary phenomenon. And, hey, if you want to talk, if you want to join in this conversation, remember you can get in the queue by calling us at 888 -627 Again, that's 888-627-6008. And we'd love to chat with you, offer you a mini soul reading, get your perspective on what's happening on the planet right now. But I want to go back to earlier July because we had a UFO encounter here in Guatemala that we've never had before, Shri, ever. Yes, and it was yes. profound. And, and here's what's so profound for me, guys. And I admit I'm a little biased on this one. It happened on your birthday. Um, it, was, it was July 10. July 10th, um, new Def Def 50, uh, <laughs> was my birthday. I'm talking this year right now, Shri, this year right now. But, yeah. but on July 10th this year, how many of you out there, you've probably heard about those lights over Phoenix. Remember you heard about that? And if not, hey, go to YouTube, go, you know, Google the lights over Phoenix, and you'll see it. Shri and I were enjoying your birthday, and it was um, not too late at night. It was only like around 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. The sun was down, um, but it wasn't dark, 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 but the sun was down. 
And we were sitting out on our balcony where we are blessed. I mean, here at the Self Ascension Sanctuary in Antigua, we're really, really blessed because we have this incredible view. And we looked up and I'm like, Shri, what, you know, it's one of those like, oh my God, are, am I, am I not? What am I seeing? What am I really seeing? Events. Well, yes. Many of you have have gazed at the night sky and seen blinking lights and different kinds of phenomenon, and you wonder, is that a, an aircraft? Well, is that is a that? satellite? Right. Is that a UFO? And, and here's what was so amazing. It started out with two lights. They were, they were two lights that were like um, a parallel line, one and another, and they were fairly far apart, but they were traveling together. And I was the one that first saw it. And I stood up to get a better view. Shri's sitting there still having his wonderful little glass of birthday wine. And uh, I was like, Shri, what is that? And of course, your first reaction was, oh, that's a plane. And I, I pointed over to, to the right in the distance. I said, no, Shri, that's a plane. Right. What there is was that? A plane in the sky. <laughs> and, and as I gazed up into the sky and we and looked at this, it's as if you know when you're looking in the night sky, there was a uh, uh, kind of a, a whitish reddish light on one side, and then the uh, parallel. The other one was like a greenish blue, uh, kind of a green blue. Yeah, and they traveled together. They would they were moving kind of from left to right, and they were traveling together. And actually, there were several of them. Well, and then that's what happened. After we focused into those, and we noticed that, wait a minute, there's more going on here than we're aware of. There is something happening here. Then what happened was, the more we looked, there. I mean, what did we count, 20? There were lots of them. There were these pairs, these, these pairs of lights. Now, what was really amazing about them is they were all kind of traveling, let's just say going downstream together. Right, but then they would stop and they start stopped. moving in other directions. They stopped. <laughs> they would be stationary. Then they would go back the other direction. Yeah. And then they would go back to the right again. And I, the one I was particularly watching went into a cloud, and, and it didn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, hey, Hey, I'd like to see you. I'd like to communicate with you. Yeah. And it popped out. Literally, guys, popped out. And at this point, we had a beautiful group of students here at that point. So we called down. They were down in Antigua, beautiful UNESCO World Heritage City that we happen to have as our view. So we called down to our students and said, hey, guys, where are you right now? And we said, go out onto the roof of your hotel and told them where to look. Well, the next thing you know, they're all like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this really happening? And the key is, yes, it's really happening. And then... What was so fascinating was that this this lasted for about an hour. I mean, yeah, and we were, tried. We only had our the... iPhone to record it, which did a really poor job. But we were really trying to record it. Well, and and from our experience in working with uh, uh, interdimensionals, we we decided maybe the best thing to do is just relax and seek a telepathic communion to seek uh, seek some form of message. And indeed, the more uh, Kira and I relaxed, the more it became clear that these were actual extraterrestrial visitors. Well, and this was probably one of the single most profound ET experiences we've ever had. And I was smiling. I was thinking about James when we had him on the show and the, and the experiences he has. This was every bit as rich and, and profoundly, profoundly timed. You know, you and I had actually been in a meditation and talking about interdimensional communication. We knew that we were in this month of shows here in July. And, and then to have this group here with us. So the group, of course, went out and they, they were blown away and of course the next day we all really were talking about the the connections yeah. that happened and and uh, I think anytime a person has a telepathic or intuitive connection with uh, an interdimensional for for a uh, large extent, that's a personal gift. Absolutely. It's, it's a personal message. Because how it's many sort of people like your, didn't see it? Yeah. You know, how many people didn't pay attention? Often these phenomenon are only um, visually available to those who are ready to see. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I will share with you about the communion, because I think it's uh, timely and, and appropriate, yeah. is that the beings that were um, communicating via these ships, uh, what I heard very clearly was that their home base was on the planet Mars. Which is very fascinating, especially with all the interest in Mars right now. Yeah, and you think and, about and all the rovers right, and all of the right. travel And plans. we're not saying that they live there, right? All right, so they, you don't have to no, start to go, oh, great, that, they're talking about yeah. Martians. We're talking about it's kind of like a, uh, uh, a jump point. Yeah, or it's, like it's a, a station or yeah. a, a, a physical right. a physical uh, base that they can use for recharging and taking care of themselves. And, you know, lately, if you start looking at all of the revelations that are happening with all the new cameras, more and more... More, we're starting to get undeniable evidence of not only structures and things that exist on Mars, but also our moon 
there's a lot going on around that right now. Well, and, and let's just explore Mars for another moment. Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, I invite I'll you. I'll explore it anytime, Shree. <laughs> let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the travel time's a killer. I, yeah, yeah, I, I know. Bummer. <laughs> the um, thing that, for those of you that have this interest, if you have not looked at NASA's uh, photos. Go look. It's really wondrous and wonderful. And what you need to do is half close your eyes and imagine what those ground impressions might be if the buildings were still there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of like looking at a foundation of a high-rise when there's no high-rise. Yeah. And, and you begin to see, oh, there was water, there were currents, there were structures on yeah. the hillsides. Yeah. And it becomes quite obvious that Mars was once a rich uh, civilization. Well, you know, even even our scientists are starting to acknowledge that. I mean, they're, they're beyond the speculation and starting to definitively say, you know, we've got to concede that this planet it carried a lot of life. And there's actually a lot of really well done. I mean, you have to wade through some of the ones that are just absolutely ridiculous, but there are some really well done videos around this on YouTube. And if you go start poking around YouTube, you will find some really intelligent, well done. Get ones that were recently more done in this year um, or late 2013, where this data has become, you know, essentially Shri undeniable. And this is something that the Archangelic Realm has been sharing with us for over 12 years now is that post-2000, we are at the time of undeniable contact, yet the powers that be, the misinformation campaigns, the Be Afraid TV shows, the Be Afraid movies, want us to be afraid because God forbid we accept that we are not alone in the universe, and yet everywhere you go, you can't deny it Well, now, it whose anymore. God is going to forbid that? That's, <laughs> that's really the, the powerful issue here. I guess I really need to watch my language, huh, don't I, babe? Thank you, you, you know, for calling me on that one. Well, you know, but there's so many of <laughs> uh, the world's great faiths that uh, simply don't have room for adding this context right, in. Right, right. And yet Pope Francis was so cute and beautiful Wasn't when he, he said, precious? he said, well, if there are ETs, I'll baptize I'll them. I'll baptize Bring them. them I, just, I love that man. You know, I actually follow him on Twitter. I, I do. And, you know, remember, uh, chat, tweet us, say hello at Shri and Kira, and also at Kira Ra. We have two tweeter, tweeter, tweeter accounts. We're, we're tweeting. <laughs> we're tweeting, baby. And, you know, speaking of tweeting, I want to mention that we were, um, what was it? Three weeks ago, we were on Bill and Nancy's show. Yes. Bill and Nancy Burns. And during that time, it was a fabulous show. And I love how every time we connect with them, Bill is, um, it's amazing to me that Bill's still alive in many ways because he is really a pioneer in getting the truth out there. Well, he's pushed the envelope quite a bit. And uh, he started life as a college professor in the 70s and moved into uh, – Oh, my goodness. Uh, real crime research and yeah. UFO research. Day After Roswell was a New York Times bestseller that right. uh, he, he worked on. And, and he's one of these guys that, you know, he's so incredibly brilliant that he gets the information. He does the research. There's there's never a doubt. When he brings something forward, it's a bona fide fact. Well, and this is part of both the blessing and the dilemma of the times we are in. Oh, Now, let me, let me take this to where I'm going. All right, is, Mr. Is, passionate is, action, is, take is, it. Go for it. Right. is that we have these wonderful brains. We have this uh, this gray matter that loves to put facts and figures together. Right. And, and then when the facts and figures are put together, it's presented to our consciousness so that we can accept it fully. Yes. Now, there's many people that will accept things fully without all the facts and figures. <laughs> that, true, that true. will accept well, it based on intuitive data. Well, and because their heart, I mean, let's face it, your heart is the ultimate lie detector, and when your heart resonates as true, then you, you know that. And, and Bill's one of these guys that has a wonderful intuitive heart, and yet he will bring all the facts and figures to bear. Right. And, well, uh, you know what and, helps him do that is his amazing wife, Nancy. Yes. Who is? I mean, she's a summa cum law in Princeton University. I mean, these these people are, and we're we're proud to call them our friends. They've been our friends for over twelve years now, and these these guys are amazing. And and at the moment, I, uh, Bill is a little MIA, missing in action. We're well, going to take a station break in a minute and see right. if we can't rustle him up and get him on the show. But for right now, uh, we invite you to stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 